and local currency depreciated by almost 25%. Given the slim majority of the ruling government in both presidential and parliamentary elections, and the long period over which the imbalances had been built up, it wasn't so practical to effect a large one, large one off adjustment to achieve the macro stability that we wanted. The government therefore adopted a multi year adjustment in the 209 budget, which on behalf of the president, I presented to, budget, to parliament, to the nation on the 5th March this year. The aim of this budget mainly was to achieve fiscal consolidation. It was a research austere budget. And the first year, we were aiming at achieving a 9.4% deficit. We determined to bring it from 15% almost to 9.4% fiscal deficit. We determined to bring inflation down from 18.1 to 14.5 by December, a few months from now. And we are to increase the gross reserves to not less than two months of import cover for goods and services. Ladies and gentlemen, the government is committed to pursuing measures that will ensure attainment of macro stability at all costs because we don't feel comfortable with what we are in now. This strategy could be accomplished through fiscal discipline and it hinges on prudent public expenditure management, enhancement in revenue mobilization, and adherence to public procurement rules. As I have already indicated, one of the main objectives of this budget is to achieve fiscal consolidation. We're bringing it from 15% of fiscal deficit to 9.4. And in the medium term, we are aiming at 3%. We are working towards that. I'm happy to announce that provisional data on the implementation of the 209 budget indicate that the government's fiscal stabilization strategy is on track. Now, let me give some few, bore you with some figures, but I hope it will not take too long. The overall budget deficit for the first eight months of the year stood at 4.17% of GDP, as compared to 8.8% of GDP for the same period of last year. The deficit was mainly financed by domestic borrowing because we had not but I'm received what we were looking for from the international uh, donors. I would like to mention that a multi policy in Ghana is being designed or has been designed to support <coughs> the government's fiscal consolidation efforts. And indeed, it's been very restrictive also, therefore checking inflation. The performance of the external sector during the first half of the year has been also quite encouraging. Merchandise trade deficit dropped to about six, about eight, six, eight point six nine million dollars for the first half of this year, compared with a deficit of 2155.04 million for the same period last year. At the end of that last year, the larger than expected fiscal and current account deficit, depletion of the central bank reserves, and the uncertainties in the global financial markets resulted in a massive depreciation of our currency, as I've said. The trend continued during the first quarter of this year. 
Indeed, in January alone, our currency depreciated by about 6.8 percent against the U.S. dollar. You see, among the 24 emerging nations' currencies, is the most preferred currency. Now, and those who uh, like research may check on this today. It was yesterday that my good friend Joe Benson called me and asked me what, what we're doing in Ghana. Our currency is the most preferred currency, Joe. And thank God for that. So when I mentioned this to me, that come and do business in Ghana, I knew we were going to make it. Thank you very much, my friend. Now, the <coughs> inflationary pressures, which once again were very high last year, are not diminishing. We are making real progress in the inflation front. In August, inflation fell below 20%. And my information that this uh, last month to go even down further. What it means is that, on the whole, the stabilization that we set ourselves to work for is working. Distinguished guests, as some of you may know, since 2007, oil and gas have been discovered in commercial countries in our country. And very soon, Ghana will become an oil exporter. The experts have informed us that uh, our oil is of, is of high quality and has high gas content. Thus, for every thousand barrels of oil produced, we are told, there will be associated one million cubic meters of gas. Our government is therefore embarking on a zero gas flaring policy in order to fully utilize the associated gas from the oil fields. The domestic utilization of the gas will lead to a drastic reduction in energy costs, thereby significantly reducing the cost of doing business in Ghana. The oil revenues are expected to start flowing in 2011, holding out the promise of lifting Ghana's economy to middle income status. The management of oil revenues is indeed important for economic policy implementation and hence the need to adopt a good fiscal strategy for its effective management. In particular, the following key issues will be addressed by government immediately. One, how to transform the oil uh, wealth into meaningful development. How to enhance transparency and accountability in oil revenue administration and its allocation in our country. How to build an enhanced capacity to manage our oil resources. How to minimize the volatility of oil prices on the national budget. And how to ensure 